Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here for Real Agriculture. Today we're going to talk about subsurface drip irrigation on corn. And uh, to do that and have that conversation, we're joined by Todd Bugner of Judge Farms. Okay. Todd, welcome back. Good to be back. Hey, you know, you and I first met four years ago. Yes. Yes, sir, 2012. And you had decided, after a really, really dry year, to put 67 acres of drip irrigation on one of your farms. And uh, we had a great video. And we had 27,000 views of that video on YouTube. And everybody wants to know how it's gone. So that's what we're doing here today. So let's talk about that. First of all, just, just describe in 2012 what you did. You've got tape running, as I say, 14 inches deep across that field. That's correct. In 2012, we, uh, we suffered a total crop loss. So that forced, forced us to look to an irrigation alternative, which we've been researching. Mm. So we, we uh, in-house on the farm, we decided we we're going to put the system in ourselves. Like I said before, we uh, we built the applicator, we put the tape in on 14 inches deep every 44 inches and we broke it into the farm into six zones. Um, and uh, going ahead, uh, I'm very comfortable with the, with the topic of drip irrigation now. Uh, it's been a learning curve for the last four years, but the last three years after 2012, I have, I've reached my target of uh, 75 additional bushels per acre even though we've had planter issues and in, in some different years in there, weather mm -hmm. years. Um, so, yeah. but uh, and then this year, entering this year, uh, I had the last three years, I had a, a, an average of about 245 bushel. Going into this year, I started off re really well in May and I was pretty happy. We went to precision planting. My fields are in good shape. Uh, and then, uh, then we have a definite lack of rainfall. 2016 yeah. has been a repeat, if not a, maybe a little bit worse conditions in our, in our area of uh, just like 2012. Yeah. We've, we've suffered a drought right from planting time, right, right on through. Um, and and uh, we, we, but I'm very happy. Okay. I took everybody on a, on a good tour of the farm. Uh, I, I look at the farm and I'm happy every time I go up there. Dry land corn around me in the last lead area. I see there's been farms that have already had the okay to be removed and put the cover crop in. Yeah. And uh, when you look at my crop up there, it's, it's not the prettiest crop I've ever had, but I'm at one, I'm, I'm estim a yield estimate at 180 with some test weight. I'm gonna be, make 200 bushel. Yeah. I looked at that year, I've had uh, the last three years, I've been able to put 75 bushel to the acre at least towards my, towards my paying my system down. Yeah. And this year, I go into this year, I look up there and I know that, that because of the drought, and me having my subsurface drip, I'm putting, I'm paying off at least half of my initial capital. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that, because you basically said it's, you put this in yourself, did a lot of work yourself yep. at fourteen hundred dollars per acre, yep. right? So let's do a little bit of the math, and you were doing that for us earlier on, yep. and you you figure you've got about half of that paid for at this stage four years later, and you're looking to pay it off when? Well, then this year I've always said it's like insurance. When you have a drought year, that's going to excel and it's going to pay pay yep. itself right like. I have 180 bushel that goes straight towards my bottom line because uh, everybody says I carry crop insurance. We have multiple farms in different geographical and different soil types. My one, my crop insurance is one crop insurance. Yeah. So, like 2012, if I didn't have, if I had to write that farm off or, or suffer, I don't recoup that yeah. because my crop insurance is all one. Right. So. so you you got it. So and you're you're looking to get about 20 years out of the system, right? Very so very easily. so you're going to take that uh, that payment that you've been making over the last you know four years, put it in your pocket down the road. And being a livestock farmer, I like the guarantee of marketable bushels that are quality bushels. Okay. I have a good test weight, and that when that goes to the feed trade, right? I feel good. Let's talk about what else you've learned. Um, Fertigation, opportunity to run some fertilizer out here, put those inputs where they need to be. Um, you're using a, a little bit of 28 percent, right? You're, I'm correct. I like to think of myself as a little bit better of a farmer because I have my intensive management. It's taught me intensive corn management, right. so I, I know the stages when I should be, you know, inserting when when a corn needs uh, extra nitrogen. And we've always talked about this pre-tossal boost of nitrogen that everybody's and I've been doing that yeah. as we go, and it's very easily to do through the drip because yeah. it's just a matter of uh, recordable and, and measurable. Uh, we can put the fertigation with right. It. So tell, tell so when are you running it, for example, just just pre-tassel or Yep. We, we later uh, later on in mid, in mid stage in July and when it when it's getting ready to toss up. Yeah, I just put in three three gallons to the acre of uh, 
of 28%, right? which is almost like Eight, uh, 10 pounds, t- yeah. close to 10 pounds. Oh, in 10, a, a 10 pounds? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And there's lots of room. I'm by no, maybe in four years from now, we'll sit here and not, maybe I'll learn more about fertigation. Mm-hmm. I focused on crop management, planting, getting some everything in place, and now I got to work on doing that fertigation part. Yeah, so. Let's talk about water. Now, you've got a, I mean, a big challenge for a lot of guys is, and, and farmers is whether they have water, whether they can get permits, and whether they can draw. Yeah. You have a pond basically on the farm. Yeah, I have a dug pond when it's uh, spring fed. I'm, I'm very happy to have it. It replenishes itself. And, uh, and I uh, spend time trying to reduce my water usage. That's mm-hmm. my big thing. I want to use less water. I'm not saying uh, drip irrigation still uses a, a, a good volume of water. It might be two thirds of what I do with, with uh, overhead watering. Mm-hmm. It could be. What about maintenance? I mean, and management. I mean, like, how much time do you spend managing the um, the watering of those sixty-seven acres? Uh, it's more. It's all about what you make your farm. I spend time trying to understand my water holding capacity of my soil, so mm-hmm. that I can turn it on at the optimum time. Uh, my initial labor cost was putting it in. Yep. My uh, my uh, maintenance program after the fact is not. We we flush we flush continuously, and in uh, in. I'd say I, I, my electricity use is minor, so the, the, my cost later on is, uh, the, the, uh, I would say, n- not very much. I don't have a lot of uh, maintenance cost. Uh, we like to, it's like keeping your, I, I refer to that system as, as if you have, a, uh, if, if you keep everything clean, it's like your furnace in your house. You'll, it'll last a long time if you keep things clean and, and look after it. Let's talk about, um, I guess, what what you can share with other farmers what, what you learn. Obviously, it really pays here because because of this sand. Yep. And the fact that it's 30 degrees today and it's early September and it's uh, you've got some, you know, you've got some challenging conditions, right? Yes, so, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I run a multitude of uh, soil soil types and I and I feel very comfortable now that I have pl- uh, 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 operations in place in in our where where I consider my my corn to be uh, a, a challenge to grow. Mm. So I think it's going to alleviate a lot of, a lot of the, uh, what, what I would call, challenges in my corner. Right. But I look at it, you don't want to do it all in one stage anyway. You look at your farm, you get a map of your farm, and you're kind of a layout, and you figure what system fits the best. You look at your water source, make sure it's a good water source, mm-hmm. good quality water, lots of water. Then you're going to want to get your water taking permit. If, if that all goes ahead, you can put infrastructure in, like mainline piping. You can have all that done ahead of time, and then uh, your soil work, you can have your, your land built up to the optimum levels where you want to be, so it's not such a challenge. Your tillage, you might want to, you have no compaction layers, and then you have a whole a whole program in effect, and when you go to the table, it's not, it's, it's you know, you've already have a third of your cost in, you can pumps and build, you know, maybe a building around right. the pond. You can put all that in in stages, and then, so it's not all at once, awesome. overwhelming. Awesome. Because you're gonna need some time to, to install and have measures in place, the cropping, the crop plan ahead of you, maybe a cereal or something, so that you can you know get some extra help in at the time and work with it. Great stuff. Hey, um, thank you, sir. It's been four years. I w- we'll come back in two and see how you're doing. How Very about good. that? Look awesome. forward to it. Thank you so much.